Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jackie. And let's get started. For DIY number one, I'm going to start off with one of these home signs from Christmas time. And I'm going to remove these staples that are on the back just with a regular old flat screwdriver till they all come off. And then I'm going to use my Cricut spatula to pop off the roof and peel off any excess paper that's on there. And now I'm gonna remove the little wreath and save it for another project and remove as much of this paper as I can. Whatever is stuck, I'm taking this paper towel, placing it on top and soaking it with some water and allowing it to sit for a good 15, 20 minutes or so to soften up all the paper. And once that time is up, then you just remove all the paper. You could use a scraper and it'll all come off like this. So now you have a fresh chipboard and you can do whatever you want with it. So I'm gonna go in with this white Adirondack paint, paint it up. It's a chalk paint by Folk Art. And then I'll just set this aside. And now I'm taking these three other wood pieces. This one is a little bunny head. It's a piece of block wood and it's brand new from the Dollar Tree for Easter. Remove the label and as well as this little egg. It's a piece of block. And also this panel, it's like a fence panel. This one's been around for a little while, but it's really cute for spring. Removing the jute twine and these staples as well with my screwdriver till they all come off. And now I'm going to go back in with the same chalk paint in the white Adirondack, paint them all up. And now with the bunny head and the egg, I'm going to go in with the chalk paint in the color Willow Mist. And I'm going to do a light dry brushing with my chunky chippy brush. Actually not too, too light. I want it to be enough where you can actually see it, but not cover the whole piece completely. Just wanted to give it a little bit of character, give the bunny a little bit of a pink color. And this Willow Mist is such a light pink that it's perfect. So look at this, it's so, so good. I love this color. And once I get the bunny head done, then I'll do the same thing with the egg. Because this egg is going to become the body to the bunny. Yeah. And now I'm going to use some Waverly Antique Wax and with my Chunky Chippy brush, I will do some distressing on this fence panel because this fence panel looks way too new. Need to give it a little bit of age, a little bit of distressing. And I'll do the front and the back. Give it a complete look even though you really won't see the back, but you know, you just gotta do it. <laughs> So now I'm going to take the same antique wax and I'm going to go around the egg and the bunny head just to define the lines a little bit more. It doesn't take away from the pink, it just adds a little bit of character to them both. And now I'm ready to work on the little house form. So I'm going to go in with the chalk paint in the color Sage. And these are by Folk Art, by the way. And so I'm going to take my chunky chippy brush and I'm going to do the same thing but I'm just going to do it on the bottom two thirds of the house because I'm going for a little bit of a foliage kind of look. This is supposed to be the back of a house where I usually like to do the front of the house. On this project, it's actually going to be the back of the house. You know, the backyard where the bunnies hang out. They hang out in the backyard. So this is supposed to simulate some foliage very roughly and it'll add to the onion grass that I'll be adding in a little bit. And so I'm also going to do a little bit of the antique wax as well, just again to define the lines and give it a little bit of more character. And I'm only doing this to the, to the bottom <clears throat> two thirds of this house and the chimney. So like this. Now I can start assembling and I'm going to first put the little roof back on. It's looking a little too light, so I'm gonna go in with some of the antique wax just to give it a little bit more richness. 
make the roof look a little bit more new. And now I'm going to adhere the roof line to the roof like this, just place with some hot glue. And now we'll start assembling our little bunny. And our little bunny is going to go on the right side of the bottom. So I'll begin with the little egg. Well, it's not so little. We're just going to add some glue and adhere it to the right side. Just leave a little edge for some tumbling tower blocks to fit in there. And then the little head goes above. It's a little bit tall for the house, but that's okay. He's a big bunny. <laughs> so we'll just add that on there. It sticks pretty well. And now for my fence panel, I want it to be raised a little bit. So I'm going to go in with a few of these tumbling tower blocks and I had painted them white already. So I'm just going to place them on here. And in a little while, I'll be adding some onion grass to this panel. And had I thought about it, it probably would have been better to add it at this point. But yeah, I think I made it a little bit harder. <laughs> okay, so now I'm trying to make sure that it's going to fit just right. It does. So I'm just going to add some more hot glue and adhere it to the little house form. And it cradles the little bunny perfectly. Look how cute. Okay, so now here is where I come in with the onion grass. And I'm going to take this apart so I can add it in little sprigs. And it just comes right off. It comes apart really well. So I'm just going to add these sprigs right here on this left side. The tall grasses. Take some more and I kind of cut them and add them wherever I can fit them. So, so far all this is really good. Add a little bit to the right side. Now when I get to the middle of the fence panel, that's where it gets a little tricky. And in hindsight, it would have been better to add it prior to adding <laughs> the fence panel. But I made it work. And then I just snipped off the excess. And then on the left side, I added a little bit more just to make it a little bit more full. But it's looking so cute. So I'm just here, I'm just adding some more. Just want it to look nice and full. And now here I'm taking some of these lilacs. I only had three left on this pick. So I'm going to snip them off and adhere them to the left side to give it the flowers. Look how beautiful. Gotta have flowers in the spring. So now here I'm just going to use these two little bows that I made. They're just orange gingham bows. And I'm going to add one to the bottom of the flowers and the grass. Here's a little piece of grass that fell off. I had to add it back in there. And then this one I wanted it for the bunny but he was kind of hidden at this point. So I just placed it on the fence panel. And I also added a little butterfly for DIY number two. I'm taking this love sign, which is pretty cute. I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to work on the back. That way I can have a multi-use decor piece. So I'm going to go in with the white Adirondack paint again, the chalk paint, and just paint the back only. And now I'm going to take these packs of bunny eggs. These are new for Easter at the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm only going to use one of each color. I'm missing a blue. I couldn't find the blue. Just found the purple, the, the yellow, and the pink, but that's okay. I'll work with this. And I'm taking these poster letters and I'm going to take the H and place it on the pink one. And I'm going to take an O and place it on the yellow one. Make sure it's nice and centered. And I'm going to take the P and place it on the purple one. So it's gonna say hop. So now I'm gonna go in with some of the Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to give these letters a little bit of distressing. So I'm just taking my chunky chippy brush and going over each, one, each of them until they look like this. Give it a little bit more character. And now I'll do the same thing to my board. It's a little bit too white. I wanted to give it a little bit of an aged look, almost more like a wood grain kind of. 
I'm saying that very loosely. <laughs> but it looks cute to me. So here I'm positioning where I want the letters and starting to adhere them. I started with the P on the bottom and then the O right up top, right above it, and then the H above that. And then that makes them fit perfectly and it hides the hole on top. So now I'm going to take this really pretty ribbon. This one's actually from last year. I never did use it and the colors are almost perfect with this sign. So I'm taking this nice piece and kind of crisscrossing it in the front and scrunching it down in the middle, cinch it in the very center and taking a piece of two twine and just wrapping it around the bow and double tying it on the back for extra security. Nice and tight, so it'll cinch really, really cute. Snip off the excess, and then just making sure the bow is nice and cute. Make sure it's, it's not getting pinched in the wrong spot. And now I'm going to dovetail the ends, of course. Gotta give it that very nice look. And now I'm ready to adhere it, but first I'm gonna take this piece of burlap trim that I had extra from another project and I'm just gonna run a bead of glue on the top of the sign and placing that on top just to give it another texture. And I'm not gonna go around the other side because love is on the other side, so I'll just snip it off right at the edge here like this. And now I'm gonna take my bow, add a dab of glue and adhere it to the top. Look how adorable, but we're not done. Now I'm gonna take these two buttons, a transparent yellow and an opaque pink, and glue them together, and then place in this little set of buttons on the center of our little bow. Look how adorable. And here's how it looks, and a closer look at the final reveal. With DIY number three, I'm going to use the other three eggs that were a part of that twin pack of eggs and I'm gonna go in with some of these pom-poms but I feel like this green and this pink is way too strong so instead I'm gonna go in with this light blue this white one from Christmas and this yellow one and all I'm going to do is take the pom-poms and adhere them to the gaps of these little eggs and I'll just do different colors at different sections of the eggs that way they're not all too matchy matchy. And I'm gonna do the white and put, place that on the center of the one, on the top of the other, and on the bottom of the other, and which is the yellow one, which I think is my favorite. I don't know, there's just something about that yellow it looks so nice and bright and cheery. So here I'm gonna add this one to the center and then this one to the bottom. And now I'm just gonna take a little bit of hot glue and adhere the ends to the back. Make sure they're nice and secure and just fold them back like this. And now I'm taking these little gingham ribbon bows that I made and I'm just going to place them on the holes of these eggs. Look how adorable, oh my goodness, they're just so cute. And these gingham ribbons were also from the Dollar Tree. So this blue one's going on this yellow egg and then this other pink one goes on the purple egg. I wish I would have found some purple gingham ribbon, but no, couldn't find any purple. But anyway, they're super cute, so I'll set these aside for a minute. And now I'm gonna go in with one of these egg decor pieces. It's like a sign and removing the jute twine. And I'm gonna go in with all five of these colors, this yellow, this fuchsia, this blue, this purple, and this white until it looks like this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so bright. <laughs> I feel like it's a little bit too bright. So I'm gonna soften it up with a little bit of sanding. So I'm taking my finger sander and sanding it all around. And that helped it a little bit, but now I'm gonna go in with some of the white Adirondack chalk paint, just to tone it down a little bit more. It's a little, it's still a little bit too, too bright. I mean, the colors are beautiful, but for what I want here, I want it to look a little bit distressed, like the egg's been around for a little while. 
like maybe when I was a kid. <laughs> so I'm just going to go over it with this dry brushing. And if I add a little bit too much, I can go in with my finger sander or a baby wipe, whichever. So now here I'm taking one of these snowball decors from Christmas. And these make a perfect bunny tail. Look how adorable. Perfect size for the bunny. Oh my goodness, so cute. Okay, so now I'm ready to start assembling my eggs, my little pom-pom eggs. And so I'm only going to do two of these three. I'm going to adhere this yellow one to the left side, which really there's really no rhyme or reason. But I place this yellow one on the left side and I'm gonna take this purple one and place it on the right side. Make sure it's able to stand up because it's just going to lean against my wall on a shelf and it stands perfectly. And then this pink one is just going to go on the side. So I'm going to add a bow to the very top of the big egg and then this DIY is complete. And here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number four. I'm going to take these three packs of these miniature wood pieces. It's a little chick. Look how adorable. I'm just going to take one. One of these carrots. Super adorable. <laughs> and then the bunny. Oh my goodness. So, so cute. So just one of each of these. These little pieces. And I'm going to take my crocodile, And I'm going to create a hole right above the bunny body because I'm going to be making some garlands, some wood beaded garlands. And I'm going to make a hole right above on the head of the chick. This crocodile does such a fantastic job in creating these holes. Now for the carrot, I couldn't get it because the carrot was a little bit too thick. So instead, I'm going to go in with my drill and make a quick hole, which was super easy. But just like this. Go in reverse, I can remove it. <laughs> and now I'm gonna go in with my little finger sander and sand it up really quick, make sure there's no splinters or anything sticking out. So I just give them a light sanding. And now that they're nice and sanded, clean up my mess a little bit and take these four paints that I'm going to go in with. I'm going to use this green, this orange, this white, and this yellow until they're all painted up. Look how adorable. So now I'm going to take some of the antique wax and I'm just going to do a little dry brushing just to give all these pieces a little bit of more character. So the carrot and the little chicky. I even give the chicky some brown on the bottom on his little feet and the rabbit. So now I'm going to use this needle, it's like an embroidery needle, and it's got a pretty good size eye, so this jute twine from Walmart fits through there perfectly. Just a little bit of finagling and I get it through there just fine. Kind of get some slack and get it ready to thread my beads. So I'll just poke that back on there and now I'm going to take these beads from the Dollar Tree. They're already painted. And I haven't seen them in a while, so I don't know if they discontinued them, but these are pretty good. I mean, the green is green, the orange is orange, the yellow is yellow. I mean, those are the colors that I need to make these garlands, so that was pretty easy. And then these brown ones, they're also from the Dollar Tree, but they are from the hair section. And they are a pretty brown color. So now I'm going to take this pack of beads that I got from Halloween from Amazon. And there are just some white ones in there, so I'm going to take those for the bunny garland and also some of the brown ones from the hair section of the Dollar Tree as well. So now I'll begin with the bunny one, and I also added some natural beads from Amazon, but I decided not to use them at the last minute. So here I go with my, my I almost said my needle and thread, <laughs> my needle and jute twine, and I'm just going to string them in this manner. And now once I've got them all strung, now I'm putting the, the bunny through the needle and I'm going to create a double knot to secure it well. So here's my first knot and then here's my second knot. 
secure it really well, really tight. And now taking the needle and going back up the first few beads just to secure it. And then that way nothing is sticking up. And to make sure it's nice and straight and pull it nice and taut. And once I get that nice and straight, then I snip off the jute twine with a needle. I'm done with this. So now I'm going to push all the beads to the end and snip off the jute twine, just leaving a couple inches. And now I'm taking some more jute twine and I'm just going to wrap it around my hand, kind of open my hand a little bit and wrap it around a good, I don't know, 20 something times. I don't think I really counted. Snip off the excess. And here I'm beginning to add this tassel to my garland. I made one knot and then I realized, wait a minute, I wanna make this a little bit prettier. So I picked up this really cute like lace ribbon and I just got one loop, snip off the excess. And thankfully I only made one knot that I had to undo, which it wasn't tough, it wasn't bad at all. And now I'm able to remove the makings of the tassel and add my lacy ribbon to the top to surround it and place my jute twine back through the loop and now secure it with a good double knot. So make sure to make it really tight because we don't want this falling apart and make sure it's a nice strong knot. So once I get this done, now I can take another piece of jute twine, nice long piece, and I'm going to tie the top part of my tassel. And I'll just go around as many times as I need to until I'm done with the jute twine and leave enough to do another double knot. Make sure everything nice and secure and snip off any excess jute twine that's anywhere. So now I'm taking the tassel bottom and I'm going to go ahead and cut it open. And now just give it a little haircut and get everything nice and straight. And look how adorable, oh my goodness, so cute. So now I do the same thing, this one's done. So now I do the same thing with the other two, but I'm gonna use these two ribbons for the little chicky. And I'm going to use these two ribbons and this orange jute twine for the carrot. Until they look like this. Look at this. Oh my goodness, so cute. <laughs> oh, I just love these wooden beads, these garlands. Oh my goodness, they came out so cute with the gingham ribbons and the lace ribbons and that yellow ribbon and the burlap ribbon. Adorable. Here's how they look. Here's the bunny one. Here's the carrot one, and here's the chicky one. And a closer look at the final reveal. DIY number five. I'm going to take this carrot garland from the Dollar Tree. It's new for Easter. The carrots are actually made of styrofoam and they're wrapped in some orange jute twine. And the tops are made of green raffia, which I'm going to embellish a little bit. So I'm gonna take this greenery, the Dollar Tree, they call it foliage, but I figured it looks a lot like carrot tops to me. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just going to take this piece of sprig and I'm going to take my weeding tool, which see if you don't have a cricket, still pick up these weeding tools because they, they're good for poking, <laughs> poking through. So I'm going to add this piece of foliage, this greenery, and just embellish these little carrots. So I'm just going to cut them all. I'm going to cut up these greenery and these like two inch sections or so. And so I have them all cut up and I'm going to leave. First I thought about taking the, the raffia off, but then I thought, well, you know what? It gives it a little bit more interest, more texture. So I'm just going to add these foliage pieces and I'm just going to stick my weeding tool in there to make the hole and then add some hot glue and adhere all these pieces on like this. Look how cute. So now I'm going to embellish the garland a little bit more with these ribbons, this orange and white 
gingham ribbon is so pretty and then the green and white ribbon is actually from Christmas time but it's perfect so I cut them all in this length which is approximately about five inches or so and now I'm just gonna tie them on to the jute twine in this manner just kind of make, make a loop and tie them up and I'll do two in each section and there are seven sections total in between each of the carrots and then the two ends it's seven sections so 14 of these ribbons and I think the ribbon adding the ribbon makes it look so much more pretty so here I'm just looping it up like this in this manner and I continue to do this until I get it all done and look how cute so here I made some more of these little bows with all the tails dubbed. And now all I have to do is adhere one of the little bows on the tops of each of these little carrots. You know, just to make them look super cute. Yeah, why not? Look at that. So I just alternate the colors. I did orange first, then the green, and so forth and so forth until I'm all done. The last one is a green and here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal for DIY number six I'm taking one of these little house form blocks they're from the Dollar Tree they've been around for a little while and I'm removing the sticker of course and I'm gonna go in with the Waverly antique wax give it a full coat and I'm going to take some of this spackle and cover the little hole on this little bunny cutout. These are back. This one I had from last year, but these are back as well as all the other shapes, the little chick, the egg, the bunny. So here I'm going to go in with this white paint and just paint it up, full coat. And I'm going to adhere this bunny to my little house shape, or should I say house block? And now I'm going to take these sticker gems and these used to have these little pearls in the center like these here but I had removed the pearls for another project so I'm just going to take these and place them in this form and cover the whole little bunny with these gems until they look like this. So now I'm going to go back in with the Waverly Antique Wax and go over all the gems with this wax to give them a little bit of a darker tone. And I'm just doing it very lightly and go all over on the top, on the bottom, everywhere. On the bottom I did go a little bit too heavy, but I do end up going back in with some white so it'll be perfect and if you guys hear a cat meowing it's my kitty <laughs> so random it's not the bunny <laughs> okay so here's the white and I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the white just to help tone down the brown that went a little bit too much so yeah you can always fix a mistake and now it's super cute so now what I need to do is just take the, one of the little pearls and I'm going to I'm going to use this for his eye so I'm just going to add a small dab of glue and place the little pearl for his eye look how cute oh my goodness so now here I'm taking this lacy ribbon taking a nice long piece and I'm going to create a quick little bow just want to show you guys how I make my bows nothing fancy just a little bow and just angle the ends like this I think it's a little bit easier than dovetailing these kind of ribbons and here I just adhere it to the top of my little house and I'm going to add a couple little sprigs of this greenery this is a little greenery bouquet that I purchased from the Dollar Tree and I've been using it to snip off little sprigs here and there just to help embellish my projects so just add a little dab of glue and place it here on the one end of the bow and the other piece on the other end of the bow and look how adorable oh my goodness 
And here I'm just taking my finger sander and sanding the edges just to define the lines a little bit more. And look how cute this is how it looks. And a closer look at the final reveal, which we are now at the final reveal. What do you guys think? I sure hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please give me a thumbs up i'd really appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and into my next video stay healthy safe and strong and have a great great day bye bye